up everyone back for some more juice and i've said this a lot and i've been it every time this is the one this is my favorite juice video i've ever done this is about to be it and i don't know if y'all know i don't prepare for these things i don't do anything i just i just get up here and wing it but this is going to be my favorite one because i've been thinking about it like i've been wanting to do this one i've had a lot of time to think about this you know i, I drove all the way to pickwick i drove back from pickwick um, I've been making the videos, right? And I do them all in, in order. So I've had so much, I've had to go back and look at all of my videos, right? I've had to relive what went on. The more I relive it, the more I want to talk about it. So let's go. All right, Grand Lake. Whew, man, Here, here's the crazy part about Grand Lake. This is how I'm gonna start my video off. I am really excited to do this one. Um, there's a lot that went in in this one, a lot. And I fished four Toyotas this year and two Opens and then a Toyota Championship. So seven big events. And I want to call them big individual events, right? Two-day events, three-day events, whatever you want to call it. This was my worst finish at 36th place. I got a check. It was my worst finish of the year. And I think this is going to be the best juice video. I really do. And it's really because um, sometimes the best videos aren't necessarily the ones you, you do good in. It's the ones you kind of do good in, but don't figure it out all the way, but then kind of figure out why you didn't figure it out, right? There were things that went in there. And to be honest with you, you learn so much from those, right? I can't say I always learn. I do learn. I do learn. I take that back. I, I want to say I do learn from the really, really bad, bad ones. But sometimes I, I learn more from like the okay ones, right? And maybe it's why i did so good at pickwick because of of grand i'm taking what i learned from grand and applying it to pickwick and i gotta be honest with you of all the years i'm fishing these opens have made me better not so much of a better fisherman i've learned how to adapt to the 200 and something boats i mean it's a lot of boats and doing it over and over and over again at places i'm not used to going to so uh i don't know let's dive in all right i'm interrupting my own video here's why juice videos if you are looking for a video that's going to give you a bunch of waypoints that says here's here's where i caught fish and this is this is what to do. Go throw a, a jig right here on this dock, on this bank, in this creek. It's the wrong video for you. You need to go find someone else's video. I hope it helps. Me personally, I think it's probably the worst thing you could ever do in fishing. The worst. If you're wanting to learn how to fish, it's probably the worst thing you could ever been given. I think um, high school kids and college kids that are given this stuff, they're not learning a thing. All they're learning how to do is maybe, maybe, Go catch someone else's fish for a small amount of time. And when if those fish aren't there, they bomb. You will too. What I'm trying to do is show y'all how we do it or how I do it and how if you look at it this way, you don't need anyone's info. You don't need to do any of that stuff. It changes constantly. Constantly. Fishing is always changing. And if you can adapt to the change and you can go with it and learn from your mistakes, learn from your from your successes and do all that then you can have success in fishing but if all you're trying to do is i want to see where i'm fishing or where he's fishing and take exactly what they're doing and then go apply it the next week you're setting yourself up for failure i can't say that enough if you disagree with me i'm telling you this is this this video ain't for you it's not because this is not it's not gonna help you guys i promise i can't i can't stress it enough it it might win you a tournament it will once, but in the long run, dude, you're doing yourself a way to the service. So that's my interruption. If you still want to, still want to keep listening, let's get back in it. All right. I got to admit, when I go to some of these places, I have a preconceived notion of what I'm going to do. I don't think that's a bad thing. Uh, when I go to places that I think I can sight fish, I plan on sight fishing the whole time. When I go to other places, um, in the fall, I kind of have an idea of how I like to fish. Uh, I like to fish top water if y'all don't know. Um, I like to power fish. If y'all know, I hate finesse fishing, stuff like that. So when I go there, I instantly go straight for that. I've had success at Grand before. Quite a bit of success. Um, Grand's one of my favorite lakes, but I never really feel comfortable at Grand. 
Um, I do when I'm sight fishing and maybe doing certain little things. But the problem is, is usually when I've had success, it's a water level deal. Well, this time the water level was not where I wanted it to be, but it also gave me a chance to start off grand at a level and not have to adjust to the water level. Like usually it's dropping or, or coming up, going down and I'm having to adjust as it goes on. And, and I don't, I don't like that. This time it, it was where it was at and I got to start off practice where it's at and it wasn't going to move for the most part. So if you see, I get out there and I kind of have a pretty good first couple hours. I get some bites doing some stuff and I'm like, okay, it's clicking. And then it turned bad for, for a couple hours, like no bites. And I knew I was eventually going to have to flip some docks. I knew docks were going to play a role in it. I was trying to do it without the docks because I know how much pressure docks get. But I just got really lucky. And the first place I hit with docks, I mean, was just, it was ridiculous. Like I even called home it up. I don't have this in my practice video, but I called Holman up. And if y'all know, Holman lives on the lake, like had more success there than almost anyone. And I was like, hey man, is there like a, <laughs> is there like an evening dock bite that I'm not aware of? Cause this was my first day. Remember I only got a half a day and he's like, nah, dude, you landed on him. And I was like, awesome. So the next morning, like I'm all jacked up. Cause like they didn't have really good practices, like practice days. And mine was like phenomenal. So I go out the next morning with this, you know, I'm gonna go do this and this and this, and and it didn't work out. And I just happened to go to this one little pocket and it was like, bite, 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 and I and they were big ones. And I say they were big ones, like I, like I said, I fished the next three days of practice and or two and a half and never felt like I got anything around anything like this. So, I mean, I was right, they were big ones. Um, and then I would get like, you know, a random big bite here and there, but nothing, when you go fish 100 docks and you get one random or two random bites um, that are big ones, you can't really do much with that. Like if you go fish 30 down a, down a line of boat docks and you get one bite down the low, you know row of boat docks, I don't really consider those boat docks any good. Maybe that one dock is, but even then it's like it, it doesn't really do much for me, right? Because you could go fish those 30 in the tournament and not get any, and you just wasted you know four hours. In the midst of all of that, I did kind of figure out some things, right? I figured out that that you could get bit on a jig, and I was throwing a three quarter ounce jig. Why? I had a, I had this, I had some jigs rigged up to fish some bluff walls and do some other things in the heavier jig, and I just started fishing it. And then once you start getting bit on it, because I was going to fish some deeper docks with it and all this stuff, I just kept on getting bit. I'm like, why change? I, I don't know. Maybe there's something to it. Maybe there's not. I was always throwing a topwater around, okay? And I would throw it around during the day a little bit, but mainly when I when I fished it the next morning, I got bit on it. And then that evening I got bit again. And I wasn't fishing anything that great. It was just, um, I was just throwing it around. And then I noticed every morning, every evening, it was like a light switch. Like you threw it and you, you could get bit pretty much anywhere you wanted it to. And what I mean by that is if you threw it enough in, in 30 to 45 minutes, you'd get a bite or two. And sometimes you go a couple hours without getting bites doing anything. So it was obvious that there was a morning bite and an evening bite on a top water. Nothing giant, but you, they were almost all keepers. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do this in the tournament here and there. I would try it during the day, but it just, it didn't feel good. It, I mean, and, and then I had this jig bite going on that was fairly good. It was good enough to, it never made me want to go throw the top water because it was, it was good. And I wasn't going to miss any. I was going to, I was going to stick them. It was, it was by that time in the afternoon, I figured, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm only going to need a couple of these bites in the afternoon and it, they're going to go a long way. Well, you know, like anything else, I, I've learned not to just go run around that lake or any of these lakes. And, and I just started trusting my pattern. So I was like marking places that I was going to fish. And throughout the tournament, I was noticing some things, right? And I got in this one pocket and I was going down it and I showed it in practice. It was when I started swimming this jig. I was just kind of throwing it around and I throw it like logs in the water and things in the water you know nothing nothing respect i really wasn't getting any bites doing it there was a boat ramp in the back of this one pocket i threw it with the boat ramp nothing and and i had gotten bit in between docks like I, there was a boat ramp i got bit on 
and something like that, but it was right next to a dock. Those are kind of like, it's like a fish moving from a dock to something. It wasn't like a fish moving way down the bank, sitting on a log. Those are different. So, but every once in a while when I'm throwing this, like these giant big rock bass, we call them rock bass. Um, they're like oversized perch. If y'all don't know what I'm talking about, they got a big mouth. They can, you know, but, but a lot of perch, like when I'm reeling in, they would, they would follow my jig all the time, bite on it, pinch on it, everything. And I'm like, okay, you know, I always figured that there was maybe like some type of wolf pack thing going on in grand. I, I don't know if there really is, but in my head, I'm like, this is kind of what I was doing at Smith to a degree. And so I just kind of started, you know, at times just throwing that jig around really not paying attention. Well, I finally got bit on it. Like I got bit on it and how I got bit was so different than Smith. Like Smith, you throw like right on the bank and you get like two cranks and they eat it shallow. This one was like, I was doing the same thing on the same bank, but when it bit, it bit so much closer to the boat and I'm sitting in like 12 to 14 and it probably bit in eight or nine. And I was going, that was a weird place for it to bite the first one. So I keep going down the bank and the next thing I know, I catch another one like five minutes later and it's hard to get a bite and I catch one same deal. It's not on the bank. It's like halfway back. And I'm like, what in the world? I'm like, no way. I mean, twos, two usually lets you know it's a pattern. I don't go five more minutes to catch another one. And I'm like, okay, now, now something's going on, right? This is, this is interesting. I actually called up Palman and told him about it. He's like, dude, I don't know what you're doing. You're always doing something goofy. He's like, I've never even heard of anyone doing something like that. So I leave there and I start kind of looking at my map and I'm trying to figure out banks because there's no boat docks on the bank. I'm trying to figure out some things and like, okay, where, where on this lake can I go and do this that it looks like this? And, and I kind of, I kind of thought of some places and I went to one and I, and I went and I went, and I went about 20 minutes and I catch one and now it's like, okay, so now I've got four bites and this is in a totally different pocket you know, or a pretty big creek. So I'm like, okay. And then I go for a long time, another like 30, 45 minutes, but I catch another one. It's my biggest one. Well, I just quit. So I kind of, I kind of look on the map and I knew I've been there enough to where I'm like, okay, what about this bank? And I would go look at these banks and I marked them. I didn't fish any of them. Now, the problem with that was, is we had a lot of wind that day coming from the, I can't, I think it was the South. There was a lot of wind being pushed up in there. It wasn't like I was fishing windy banks, but there was wind blowing up in these areas instead of coming out of the creeks. It was semi going into them. I, that had me concerned, but um, you know, nothing I can do about wind. I mean, I can't help but finding, find a pattern. And most of those banks were on, on creeks that were facing the same direction. It was what it was. I bring that up because there was still something with swimming that jig. Okay. Now I didn't catch any fish on it in the tournament. The first day it was, uh, I want to say both days, one day it was blowing from the wrong other direction. And then another day it was like completely dead glass. So I tried it a little bit. It didn't work, but it didn't work on those banks. I bring all that up because on day one, when I get out there and I start fishing, I do catch two on a top water. But the problem was, is when I, when I got bit that one day on those docks, yes, one day was in the afternoon in the evening time and the other day was in the morning and it was fairly early like eight or nine so i was going hey man they'll bite on these dikes pretty early i'm worried that i don't want anyone to go through that pocket you know before me and and flip around so i'm top watering and flipping and as i'm doing that like i'm getting no bites on docks none and i've already caught two on top water and i get bit on this rail and it's a five pounder and the rail was right next to the dock i kind of consider it almost the same thing but it wasn't I was still in the back of my head, like, okay, it's not the same thing, but it's no big deal, you know? And as this keeps going and going and going, and my guy catches a couple on a chatterbait behind me, suspended under the docks. And I had, I had got on a little bite like that in practice, but it, they weren't big. So I kind of let, he kept on doing that and he caught three, you know, but none of them were just, just big ones. But I kept on flipping. Next thing you know, I go to back to back docks and flip two up. The fourth and fifth one and i'm like okay now they're like they're starting to get on them let's go do this and i go and do it and do it and do it, do it and i never get another bite maybe like i maybe i catch one small i don't know 
and, and, I'm, and then I go try to run the pattern because I've got five, I feel pretty comfortable. I go try to run the pattern of swimming the jig down those banks. It didn't feel right, it was so dead. It just, it was calm, nothing felt right. So I go back and I keep hitting some of these same places where I shook off these big ones. And there was one in particular, and like I said, I, I never never got to be on video because because the video went out, but there was one that I shook off in practice that was, a, it was an absolute big one. And when it hit, it hit so much different, harder. And instead of, it went up the bank, on top of the bank, and while I was pulling on it, trying to get it shaken off, and I didn't have a hook on, it's like creating this giant boil going down the bank. Like, it's so big. And I'm like, okay. Well, I fished for that thing like three times. Well, the second time I went to her, like I said, I, I, was, I wasn't getting bit on the docks, but I would just keep throwing down the bank, and it was so shallow up there, I don't really want to flip it. So I just kind of was throwing up there and like swimming it back and I swim that thing back and she just, she just nose dives it, man. And, and, and I'll never, I was as about as patient as I've ever been. I never set the hook and she never touched it. And I was going, you gotta be kidding me. Well, I fished around, fished around, never got anything else. Caught a couple. I, I think I told you, you know, a rage swimmer and stuff, just some fish busting. And I go back, fish for it again, but I was also fishing for specific fish where I'd gotten bit. And I would stop fishing. The, I would fish the docks, but I'd throw up there really shallow too in front of them. And then one of these other ones, man, it, it did. It swirled on it. It did something. I set the hook. I, I might have boated up for a second. I don't know. It was a big one. And and it, I didn't get it. I didn't. I never really stuck it and lost it. I didn't do any of that. It just. I don't know what really happened. I've You know. I can't watch the video. I don't have it. But I, I remember it vividly. But I'm thinking, golly, these fish have moved a little bit. Why are they off these docks? So I I kind of kept on trying to do that and just try to keep it honest. But it was pretty late in the day, and and uh, that was it. I weighed in, and I was kind of happy with what I had. I had 12-something pounds. I was in – I might have been in the top 25, top tw – I'm not sure. I was up there. I was up there in perfect striking distance to do good. No big deal. As day two rolls around, this is where – this is why I'm so excited about this video is because I always come back and go, okay, what do I change? What do I do different, right? What, what, after looking at day one and how my practice went, what do I do? I said, man, let's not flip these docks as much in the morning. Let's just go run this top water and then go hit on new water. Like we're going to hit a little bit of old water and then a whole bunch of new water. We're just going to run with it because I just know I can't flip up four or five fish off docks. It's not going to happen. So I go run with it. I catch that good one. And then I had a, a giant absolute crush it and it missed it. And then, you know, at 945, this is, this is what's interesting about how I think, you know, and I explained this in, on day two about how they bit. And this last one bit, it's like the worst topwater bite of all time, right? And if you've watched day two, go, go check out my day two video. You'll hear me talk about it. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to go over it again, but it, it, it's like, okay, like that, that bite, that one bite tells me they don't want it no more. So I switched and I tried to flip some docks. I tried to do some things and I finally was just, I, I kind of just started swimming the jig more than flipping because once again, I can't get any flipping bites. And all of a sudden I, I catch this one swimming this jig. It was right where I'd got blown up earlier and I catch it and I'm like, God, I should have been, I, like I should have just, it's just like the top water deal. Like I kept on trying to make that flipping bite, even though the flipping bite semi worked for three or four days in practice, it, dude, it was horrible. But I, they were still biting a jig. So I started running this some more and I just pulled up in this one dock that it just made sense, rolled up there, swam it out there, caught another one. And I'm like, golly, I'm running out of time and I'm running out of spots. And the reason I say I'm running out of spots is this. For whatever reason, it was so obvious that you you couldn't hardly get a random bite anymore. It was like you were going to get bit where you get bit in practice, or if you got bit that same day in the same place, you'd get bit there. And I was like, oh, I don't have enough spots. I'm like, that's what I mean by spots is like enough boat docks, uh, um, a specific rock, a specific whatever down the bank. Like you could fish this whole bank, and I, I, I truly believe you're going to get almost – you're going to get bit almost in this one exact spot. I just, it felt that way with me and I'm not sure about everyone else, but it, it, you know, it just, that's what it felt like. 
and I, I, I get done and, and that's my tournament, right? And when I talk about the juice is like, I, I talk about like how it changed and how I did adapt. Now I bring this up because I did watch day three, a little bit of it. And it was, it was tough. It was tough watching them catch them on a whopper plopper. And they were catching them off the banks. I was kind of fishing. I was kind of on some of them, but I got on this dock pattern. It didn't seem like a lot of them were on dock patterns. Um, so the dock pattern was kind of misleading to me, like the actual flip in a dock, not a fishing around docks, but the actual flipping of a dock, like right up next to it. And of course I caught some on the inside of it up towards the bank, but we can call that kind of, kind of almost more bank fishing. I think they were there more, but they were there because of the dock and the bank. Okay. I know that's a lot, but there was a lot that went into it. But as I watched this thing unfold, the thing about grand is this we get preconceived notions okay and i probably should have brought this up first but they had the npfl there and i, was, I knew some guys that fished the npfl i knew what they did mm, they had kind of told me a little bit about this and that but i'm one of those guys that doesn't listen i went and did my own thing for like two days of practice and i eventually went and tried their deal i never had a bite and after talking to hallman he wasn't getting bit doing it either and what it was is like on all these lakes, they get on flat banks, steep banks, bluff banks, rock banks, dirt banks. Like when you get on a place like that, it's a bank thing, right? Pickwick, okay, which I know I hadn't done a video, was not necessarily that much of a bank thing, okay? It was off the bank, even though it was still shallow. It wasn't like you wouldn't go down and look at a bank and go, they're, they're getting on that bank. Grand can be that way. So it can be flats and steep and like all these things well they were on specific steeper banks for me and I actually i got a phone call like uh yesterday and a guy's on grand and he was and i kind of kind of gave him some stuff and he was like oh man they're not on that they're on this other and he goes they're on all the flat stuff again and i'm like there you go it's why i don't take information from people it's why i go do my own thing because info is great and yes, it can help you win a tournament, but if you watch guys fish long enough, those guys that get info will make you mad because they'll go win a tournament or do good in one. But do they do, they have to keep that up. They have to keep that info going up at every event they go to. And if you just go do your own thing and figure it out on your own, you don't ever need anyone's info, right? You can just go do your thing and learn your thing. So that's, that's my tip. That's my tip of the juice video. Just in the long run, learning everything on your own. And what I mean on your own is like, not having this, someone tell you what to go do, you know, because when it doesn't work and it doesn't work most of the time, you know, you rely sometimes on that and then it frustrates, you know, frustrates you and you're, you're so worried about in the back of your head, you can't go and do what you should be doing, right? So I got to watch what went down and I was close. Like I was kind of on the right pattern. I wasn't all the way there. Um, I'm never, you know, you're not always gonna be there. You're not always gonna, you, you can be close to the right pattern. I just wasn't on it enough. I didn't believe in it enough. I tried it. I tried making it work all day. I couldn't get bit all day long doing it. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. Like, why would you go do something, you know, when I tried all day in practice or tried it enough in practice, usually y'all know me, I usually talk about this, like getting that one bite. Like usually all I need is one bite, right? And I was getting those one bites doing other stuff, like swimming the jig, flipping, doing, you know, and I, I never got a bite on a top water in the middle of the day. For like four or five hours, I never had one. It was only in the evening and morning. So I just didn't go throw it all, all day. Don't know if I would have finished any better if I'd have done it, but I saw that, I saw that go on. Um, I was right on the steep banks. I didn't fish steep enough once. I, I, I kind of limited myself onto where I got bit. Looking back, I wish I'd, I wish I'd pushed the envelope further, right? And fish a little bit more different stuff. Um, the boat docks kept drawing me though. I, I just kept on dr getting drawn to more and more boat docks because I gotta be honest with you, with my belief, I was like, hey, when all else fails, when it gets really tough, when all these things go, those fish are gonna sink back down to those boat docks and get hidden in them away from the pressure. It didn't necessarily happen. It might've happened, but like there was other fish to be caught 
and I, I that was just on me that was where I messed up I thought no matter what when if I just outfished everyone on docks I could do it and make it happen and, and it wasn't the case there was an easier pattern and I bring up easier patterns because and I try to go for that easy pattern. I don't want to go for the hardest fish in the world. I've never, I, I never want to go for the hardest fish. I want to go for the easy fish. I want to go for the fish that I throw out there and she runs over there and bites my bait. Like there's fish out there for that. There's patterns out there like that. Uh, I try to go fish for the hard one and, um, and the wrong one. I was wrong on that. But luckily I did good enough to get a check. So this was a long one. It was way out there. That's my juice video. Like I said, if you're watching this and there's probably some guys that probably the guys that put a thumbs down on this actually you know what I'm going to take whatever I'm about to say I'm going to put it at the beginning of this video okay well, that's what I'm going to do I'm going to put this at the beginning of the video because I think people need to hear it before they thumbs down it and click off of it anyways guys that's my juice video of Grand Lake I hope that helps. I hope, I hope it like a lot of these juice videos aren't necessarily always, you know, this or that. Sometimes it's just all right here. I really believe that's, that's where, that's where fishing comes from. You have to be able to do everything else, but so much of it's up here and then taking what's up here, realizing your mistakes, realizing what you did wrong, the way you thought about it, preconceived notions, everything, and then learning from it and then applying it to the next one. Cause if you're not applying it to the next one, it, it, it's worthless, right? So, anyways, hope you all enjoyed this one. I really had a good time making it. See y'all.